Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and we're gonna go over the new updated report from Zillow. And we're gonna take a look at some extremely strange things that are happening in the housing market. 32 of the 50 largest metro areas right now are experiencing month over month value decline, not price decline, value decline as according to Zillow's estimate. Now this value decline is breaking normal seasonality. Now on top of that, we see a surprise end of the year surge of inventory on top of a surge in price cuts. And the rental market is hanging on by a thread. And not only that, foreclosures right now are surging past pre-COVID levels. Now, I often have people ask me, Travis, where can I find the foreclosure listings? Where are the foreclosure listings? So I wanna start this video off by showing you guys how to see if there are any foreclosures in your own local housing market. But before I do, please do me a favor, guys, and like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video, hit notifications, and help us grow our community here at Real Estate Mindset. I'm gonna show you guys how to look at foreclosure properties by accessing Zillow. Now, right now I just have a general map. You guys can see that this is a Houston area. And right now in the Houston area, there's actually 58 homes that are foreclosed. Now the really surprising thing is there's a huge range in prices as far as foreclosure. Look at the first one. The first one is a two million dollar foreclosure. Really crazy. The one to the right of it is a $68,000 lot foreclosure. So it's very, very interesting. You guys can see that for yourself, but let me show you how to access this. And really what you're going to do is when you go to Zillow, type in whatever metro area you want right here. For example, let's type in Las Vegas. So when I type in Las Vegas, you guys can see that there are 43 properties listed on MLS that are in foreclosure. Now, if you want to set your filters to only view the foreclosures, all you have to do is drop down this tab right here that says more. Now, when you drop this down, you're going to want to hit show more. So when I hit show more, it gives me the ability to hit foreclosure, auction, foreclose, or pre-foreclosure. Now, after that, you hit apply and you're good to go. Now, if you want to remove the parameters of Las Vegas, all you do is you eliminate the metro area from the search. And you guys can see now I'm not restricted to just Las Vegas. If I want to go out on the map, I could see other foreclosures, for example, down here, uh, Bullhead City, there's some, Kingman, there's some. But regardless, that's a good way to monitor the situation with foreclosures as it pertains to additional inventory. Now, let's jump into Zillow's monthly housing market update, and we're going to cover a wealth of information, including how many people I think right now are on the sidelines waiting to sell their properties. In other words, guys, I think that there are over 600,000 homeowners right now that would sell their house if interest rates would go down to 6%. Now, the name of this month's Zillow housing market report is home values start to slip as summer heat fades from housing market. This is a September 2023 housing market report. I highlighted a couple key things here. The typical U.S. home value fell 0.1% from August to September, the first month over month decline since February. That's right, you guys. Finally, Zillow has caught up. They're finally starting to show additional home value decline. And again, you guys, this type of value decline is breaking normal seasonality. And we also know that Zillow lagged. So they're finally caught up to what we've known for the last nine weeks, that home values are going down. Now, here's the interesting thing, guys. The reason why there's so many people talking about year-over-year -year price growth is the divergence stems from prices falling more rapidly at this time last year than they are now. So all it means is, is we're not losing value as quickly as we did last year yet. But that can change essentially any moment, especially with the STR bans. Home buying conditions have continued to ease since late summer. Not only did price growth tip negative, but closed sales data from August showed fewer homes selling above their list price. In addition, listing data in September showed a continued rise in the share of listings with price cuts up to 23.9% of total listings, you guys, with price cuts. That is a lot of listings. Again, 23.9%. So a massive increase in price cuts happening 
right now. Now, sales activity is absolutely in the gutter. Sales activity stepped down as well, but the seasonal decline was more muted than last year. There was 14.8% fewer newly pending listings in September than last year, an 18.9% year over year dip in August. New listings dipped 6.4% from August to September and were down only 9.3% from last year versus 12.7% year over year decline in August. So that's really good. We're not far off where we were at this time last year as far as inventory. And you guys, the housing market is only getting more unaffordable and even more toxic. So it stands to reason I don't believe we're going to have a massive surge in home buying seasonality in 2024. And really, you guys, that's what's really propping up the home prices on top of, of course, inventory. So we have the hot job market, people buying still, and we have limited inventory. But let me ask you, what happens when those things change? When those things change, prices will plummet. So here's Zillow's home value index. This is a drop down right here. You guys can come back here, try to find your own local housing market and see what's happening. But overall, you guys, the United States is finally dropping. You can see that here and look at the trajectory is really what I want to point out. The trajectory is going straight down. What I'm saying is, is I believe values of houses will continue to go down for several years. Now there may be some metro areas more than likely that will have seasonal increases of value. But right now the housing market is so un affordable. It is so toxic. It's going to take years for house prices to become affordable again for the average American. Quite frankly, right now, roughly 20% of Americans can afford to even buy a house. Think about it. Roughly 20% of Americans. That's it. Things need to change. When we drop this down and we look at other metro areas, for example, like Austin, let's see what Austin did. You guys can see that Austin barely even made any type of recovery. Let's see how many months, one, two, three, four, was that about four months it tried to make a recovery, but Austin's down big time. In fact, month over month, Austin's down 1.37%. That is a lot to be down in just one month. You can really see the bubble right here where Austin kind of hit the peak and it's now plummeting. Now, this is a trend that I expect to see on average around the nation, maybe not as pronounced as Austin, but make no mistake right now, essentially every single metro area was hit by unaffordability. Now let's also take a look at Las Vegas and see what's going on with Las Vegas because also Las Vegas has bans on Airbnbs. So you can see how close Las Vegas is. It's almost on the month over month decline list. It made a small rebound, but you guys, it didn't even come close to being peaked. So Las Vegas is still in super bad shape. Again, you know, a little bit of a rebound, but it's on its way down. Look at the trajectory here as far as month over month home value. Las Vegas is Las Vegas may be the epicenter of the housing market crash, quite frankly. Also take a look at Boise. So I've selected Boise now. You can see the same thing with Boise. Massive run up in equity, really unsustainable bubble you can see here. And then it started to go down, small increase upward. And look at guys, it's now starting to go down again in negative month over month territory. So some very, very interesting things here. Come back here on your own time. Take a look at your metro area to get a better idea of what's going on in your market. We all know that real estate is about local markets. Most of the 50 largest metropolitan areas now have higher home values than this time last year. Although several saw month over month declines in September, home values climbed month over month in only 14 of the 50 largest metro areas in September. The number one is San Diego. I cannot believe San Diego has taken over. It is so toxic. Remember guys, San Diego's off peak. So it shows that it's like the fastest growing city, but it's not even, it hasn't even made it to peak yet and we're headed down. Although it's not showing that in the numbers yet, but San Diego month over month increase, 0.8%. Really surprised to see that probably because of the lack of inventory. Literally they have no inventory. Second is Miami and then Hartford and then Los Angeles and San Jose. I would also like to note that each of those California metro areas was also on the year over year price decline list at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. Very toxic housing market. Now take a look at this. Home values fell on a monthly basis in 32 major metro areas up from 12 last month. So it more than doubled in one month. That's astonishing. 
That's the trajectory of the price cuts. That's the trajectory of how values will continue to decline and continue to break normal seasonality. The largest monthly drops were in Austin, month over month at 1.4% followed by New Orleans at 1.4, and then San Antonio at 0.9, Portland at 0.6, and Minneapolis at 0.6% as well. Home values are up from year-ago levels in more than half of the 50 largest metro areas. Annual home price gains are the highest in Hartford, Milwaukee, Providence, and Virginia Beach, and Philadelphia. Really interesting how Zillow has its own list. Home values are still down from a year ago in 18 major metro areas. So these are the metro areas that were never able to fully rebound, which means they're gonna lose even more money from peak. Number one is Austin at a loss of 10%. That's huge followed by New Orleans at 8.8, .8, Las Vegas at 4.3, Phoenix at 4.2, and San Antonio at 2.5%. And don't forget, when we compare from where they were at in peak, they are down more than that. So here's a list of the Zillow's home value index as well. Now you can either click on year over year or you can select month over month. So starting with year over year, you can see that there are still many metro areas that are showing year over year growth. Again, not growth from peak in 2022. This is only year over year. So several metro areas, let me scroll down here, but you can also see that there are several metro areas, several metro areas that are still on the year over year decline list. So the housing market ride in toxicity is nowhere near being over. And when I show you guys the month over month declines, we can really start to see the lack of sustainability and the lack of fundamentals and how we need fundamentals in order for prices to be sustained. Take a look at the month over month losses. You can see there's barely any cities that are having growth right now, and the growth is barely anything. But look at how many cities, you guys, look at how many major metro areas had month over month loss. I mean, Austin's leading the way, followed by New Orleans, San Antonio, Portland, Minneapolis, Dallas, Denver, Birmingham, Kansas City, Memphis, Seattle, Houston, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, Washington, San Francisco, Baltimore, St. Louis, Richmond, Cincinnati, Oklahoma City, Raleigh, Indianapolis, Louisville, Cleveland, Nashville, Columbus, Virginia Beach, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, United States and Hull, and Jacksonville all have month over month home value decline. New listings are now only down 9% from last year. Inventory is down about 10% year over year. So new listings fell 6.4%, unfortunately, month over month from August to September. There were 9.3% fewer new listings in September than last year versus a decline of 12.7% year over year in August. So it's improving. Inventory, the number of listings active at any time during the month in September climbed 0.2% from August. That is a great thing, you guys. So overall inventory is growing even though new listings are falling. And the reason that is, is because buying demand is being wrecked. There were 10.2% fewer active listings in September than last year versus a decline of 13.8% in August. What I'd like to point out on the new listing chart that Zillow has is basically the trajectory of year over year growth. So it has been down, but the trajectory is on its way up. And I think that's really, really special because normally this time of year, we have a declining inventory. So the fact that it is now increasing is very, very good. But also let's try to get an idea of how many active new listings are missing. So right now in September, you can see there was 327,000. But when we go up here to pre-COVID, we typically have 397,000, which means we're absent about 70,000 listings for September. So that's an additional 70,000 listings on the sideline that would more than likely sell their houses if interest rates dropped probably in the 6%. I prefer this chart over new active inventory. This is total inventory or total for sale inventory in the United States. Again, if you want to see what's going on in your own local housing market, you can go here. For example, I can go to Austin and I can see Austin's actually over pre-pandemic levels. Austin's over 2019 levels as far as inventory. How shocking is that? Again, Austin has more inventory than they did before COVID. Holy smokes. Going back to the United States, here's what I want you guys to pay attention to. So right now, according to Zillow, we have 967,000 active units for sale. Now, pre-COVID, this time of year in September, all right, we had, you guys, you ready for this? 1.63 
million. So right now, as far as the golden handcuffs, remember the quantitative tightening has been happening for not quite two years, but about a year and a half. So right now, if we look at the difference between 2023 and pre-COVID, we know that we have over 600,000 people, again, over 600,000 people on the sidelines waiting to sell their houses, waiting for interest rates to drop. And honestly, guys, by the time interest rates drop, we probably will have over 1 million people on the sidelines that will begin selling their houses because quite frankly, they can't afford to do that right now, especially if they have a low interest rate. Now that's going to be completely out of the window for the homeowners that are struggling financially right now and need to sell their house to cash in on their equity like we're seeing happening right now. I would estimate anywhere between 30 and 50% of active listings right now are forced selling. So think about how many normal active listings are just waiting for rates to come down. Now talking about sales, newly pending listings entered into a sharper seasonal decline and took longer to sell. So we can see the pending sales right here. Again, you guys, this is very, very low. In fact, we're probably going to be under 4 million total sales for the year. And I think that will be over a decade low. So the real estate industry right now, we see the recession. We feel it as professionals. We know that business is dead. We can see the housing market completely gutted. At least I can as a loan officer, realtor, and instructor. Let's talk about the rental market. Now, rents are still climbing slowly. On the whole, rental market trends seem to be returning to normal. And September continued the normal seasonal trend of cooler growth in the second half of the year. Now, asking rents climbed month over month 0.2%. That is slightly more than pre-pandemic average for this time of year. So taking a look at the rent growth here, and we really need this to go negative, you can see how it made that little bit of a dip right here. So the trajectory is good, but we really need to see this start deflating. What we see right here is called disinflation. So when it goes over that zero, if it goes under the zero line right here, that will be deflation. And that's going to wrap up the housing market report from Zillow. As a consumer, what do you do with all of this information? Well, one thing that I would suggest is, is that you enroll in my free home buying course, which will hopefully be done at the end of this month. The first module should be done this week. On top of that, if you really want to keep your hands to the pulse of the housing market and get additional consumer value, join us for our morning lives. Typically, I do morning lives at 8.45 a.m. Central Time. So come to our morning lives. And other than that, guys, you're going to want to continue to increase your credit, your income, and your assets. And you're also going to want to understand what your individual goals are and how your local housing market works. Understanding those things will allow you a higher probability to become a winner in this very, very toxic housing market market. And again, you guys, if you can, don't forget to like this video, shoot me a comment below. Let me know what else you want me to report on. And other than that, if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.